The most common way that video editors learn is by watching tutorials all day, but that's actually the worst way to do it. You see, my progress in learning the skills I needed to edit all of these videos here was actually extremely fast, but that's only because I followed this simple nine step framework, which took me from a beginner editor to a pro. So I'm going to give you all of my secrets so you can learn video editing much faster. Now let's get into it. Now welcome to the learning blueprint. Now I've created this entire document so you can learn how to improve your skills a thousand times faster. And I want to start just by explaining why tutorials can only get you so far. So they teach you the practical skills, but they don't teach you the theory. So for an example, they might show you how to make an engaging edit, but why is it engaging? Well, these are the things that you might not learn in a tutorial, but it's something which I do teach in this video. So if you do want to learn more about that, then it'll be linked in the description. And what you will learn from that video is that an edit is only engaging when it has a clear focus. So if the viewer doesn't know what to focus on, it's going to be difficult for them to watch and therefore not engaging. It's gonna have smooth animations. It's gonna look clean to the eye and it might be dynamic. And there's plenty other reasons why it might be engaging. And I teach all of that in this video but that's just some examples and you'll know if you've watched tutorials, even mine, I don't explain why it's engaging, I just show you how to do it. So you will learn practical skills, but you won't learn the theory. They also don't teach you problem solving. You see, video editing is literally the ultimate problem solving game. You either need to solve the problem of having ideas or you need to solve the problem of making that idea come into reality. How do I make this edit? Oh, I've got this sick idea in my head, but what effects do I need to make it? Video editing is a skill of problem solving. And those are two things which you just don't learn in tutorials. Because if you watch a tutorial, they will just show you how to do it. And more likely than not, you're just going to copy the edit. But you're not actually learning for yourself. You're not experimenting. So you don't have the grasp which the actual person who made the tutorial will have. And the ultimate goal is that you do have this grasp, but that you do understand what effect you can manipulate to make what idea you had come to reality. So these are the reasons why tutorials only get you so far. They're good to learn the software, but not good for creativity. So let's say you have a UI animation in your head. Well, you need to think, what will I need? Well, there's gonna be animations, there's gonna be effects, and there's gonna be assets. And these are in fact the only three things you actually need for an edit. And by breaking this down, we can then actually further diagnose where we need to improve our skills. So instead of just copying a tutorial step by step, we can actually go into it more deeply. We can go, oh, okay, so what assets would I need to create this edit? Oh, well, I'm gonna need an asset of the icon or Google Chrome, let's say. Oh, well, where am I gonna get that? I'm gonna get that on Google. But then what if there's an asset that you don't know how to create? What if there's some shape layer which comes on the screen and you go, oh, I don't know how to do that actually. Well, here's where you're going to have to think and you're going to have to use your problem solving skills to go, how am I going to make this asset? And now you're going to learn because here's a specific issue which you have in your editing. You don't know how to create this certain shape layer, bang. Now you're going to improve your editing skills so much more because you're going to specifically target that problem. And then, for example, you might come to animations. Oh, I don't know how to make this camera movement look as smooth as they did in this video. Oh, let me diagnose that tiny little issue and fix that. Because you may think that editing is this big 100% thing that you improve. But editing is actually these really small things which you improve that compound into the bigger picture. So by diagnosing, oh, I have an issue in animations. Oh, I have an issue in creating assets. You're going to improve much faster. So let's get to the point. What we're going to do is we're going to learn by recreating edits. And then we're going to use tutorials where we need help. So essentially tutorials is just the helping hand, but it's not the actual vehicle which we use to learn. It's just helping us to understand things that we genuinely don't get. So here's an example of a video which I recreated when I literally had no experience doing documentary editing, but I did it. I just persevered and I thought systematically, I thought, well, all I need is assets and then I'm going to need the animations and then I'm going to need the effects. So I recreated this small clip here at the beginning. And then I taught people how to do it in my own video. And bear in mind, I had no idea how to actually do it myself. So here was my recreation.
And the amount that I learned from recreating that, I can't even explain because there were so many little things which I had to learn in order to create that edit. And it just built my knowledge. So when I came to doing edits in the future, I then had those things which I could use. And also the problem solving skills which I learned from just recreating this short 10 second edit honestly paid me dividends. So all edits break down into three things, assets, effects, and animations. Assets, you might think of icons, images, 3D objects. Well, where can we get icons? It's probably on Google. And if not, you could create it in Photoshop. Images, probably on Google. 3D objects, you can get tons on this website called TurboSquid, and there's lots of other websites you can find. Then we have effects, glows, gradients, drop shadows. These are the small things, the small details which really add up to make the edit. Then we have animations, text animations, asset movements, camera movements. And this is all an edit is. And once you break it down, you can go, oh, okay, well, I can find all the assets, but in terms of the effects, there's this really small effect where there's particles floating around and I don't know how to do that. Now let me go into a tutorial and learn that. Oh, okay, now I know how to do that, but I don't know how to do that text animation they did. Now you can go in a tutorial and learn that. And slowly you're going to piece things together. And you're going to build your knowledge of the software in a much more deeper way than you would if you just watch tutorials and copy them. So why does this help you a thousand times more? Well, now you can identify what exactly you must learn. Oh, this doesn't look similar. I think I'm bad at smooth animations. Let me watch a tutorial and then learn and then I'll implement it into this recreation. It will improve your problem solving, which will help future edits, and you'll learn by application, not by copy. So all edits can be replicated, just define the issue. And I'm going to show you something which I didn't do in this video, but I could have. So if we just watch it, there's a small little effect where in the background, you can see there's small particles coming up behind these. And in order to create this video, I simply just took screenshots and cut these out just so I could use the assets. But the thing is, because I did that, I didn't have separate images for the people and then the background. So I couldn't add the particle effect behind them because in order to add it behind them, I would need to have them cut out. So thinking about that now, a quick fix which I could have done is I could have masked these out separately in Photoshop and then I could have just added the particle effect to the background. So these are just small ways of thinking around issues and this problem solving skill is going to completely change your video editing life because you need to know how to solve problems. That is essentially all that video editing is. So let's get to the framework. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to pick a video from your favorite YouTuber. So the criteria is for this first video we're going to do, let's not make it too complex, but let's make sure it challenges you. Let's make sure that it's got things which you would question how to do. Also, that you love the editing style because this will actually motivate you to learn it. And then it's in the niche that you want to work in, preferably. So step one, recreate any assets used. So you can find the assets online, you can create the assets on Photoshop, or you can just use similar ones for the sake of learning. So in this video, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did replicated the clip which I was recreating the most. So I don't know how to make these cartoonish characters. Now this is a skill which is completely different to video editing. This is actually like art on Photoshop or whatever. This is drawing. I don't know how to do that. So I thought, okay, how am I going to get these images? I could go on Google and make my own silly looking ones, or I could be smart and just take a screenshot of this and then cut them out in Photoshop. And then I have my own versions, which I can use. This is the type of problem solving which you should be using when you're recreating your clips. Then we come to step two. We're going to analyze the animations. So what assets are moving? What camera is moving? And how is the text being animated? So if we come back to this clip here, we can see that these assets just animate in, they drop down, and then we have a line that animates up. We have the camera just moving. So you can see that we're just analyzing step by step. So the animations, we've gone through the assets. Now we come to the animations. Then we come to analyzing the effect. So here we can see this YouTube little thing has like a vignette around it. So what did I do? I applied a vignette and then I changed the center of it. So it makes this nice dark little shadow here. And then you can see it's got particles behind it, right? So I thought, what particle effects do I know are in After Effects? 
Well, there's CC Snowfall. Maybe I could use that and I could decrease the wind so it just basically floats around. You just need to think methodically. What effect do I know can maybe do this? And then how can I manipulate the effect to do what I want? Then we just have drop shadows and stuff like that, small wiggle effects, all that kind of stuff. We just want to take a look at what's actually happening. Then we're going to start editing. And what we want to do is start with the background, as this is usually the most simple thing, or it's the most foundational thing. Then we want to position all assets. So when I actually edited this, what I did first, instead of making the animations, is I positioned them in their ending position. So when it came to animating, I didn't have to go, oh, where is this going to be positioned? Where is this going to be positioned? I already knew where that is because I had already placed them where I wanted them. So what we do, we just position everything where we want it to end. And then we work backwards. And then obviously if there's any text layers, add that too. So step five is animate the assets with keyframes. So this is where I'm going to take that ending position and then I'm gonna actually keyframe the starting position. So where I want it to begin. And then you start developing the animations. Next, animate the text layers, animate the shape layers and animate the camera. So just do it methodically. Start with the assets, then do the text, then do the shape layers if there is any, then do the 3D camera last. And doing the 3D camera last is the main thing because usually if you're starting to do 3D camera movements at the same time that you're doing other things, it's just going to become really confusing. So just keep it simple and do the 3D camera movements last. Then we want to add effects to the background, add effects to the assets, add effects to the text, which might be a glow, it might be drop shadows, it might be stuff like that. Then we go on to brutally analyzing our animations. And that's because after you've added the effects, you've done basically everything. You've done the assets, you've done the animations, and you've done the effects. So we now need to look at our work and go, are these animations smooth? Does it look accurate? If not, how can I improve it? Now you can watch tutorials in order to see how to, and you should also get external feedback because this is going to really help you know, oh, okay, I didn't even know I was doing that wrong, but now I know, so now I can improve it. And what I want to do in a video is actually analyze some of your edits. So I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can send your own edits and I will actually analyze them on a YouTube video so you can learn exactly what is going wrong and also what's going well. Step eight, record a voiceover, even if it's bad, don't worry, and just create an edit using what you've learned. So so what we always aim for is whatever we learn, we actually want to implement it with our own ideas. So in this step, we're going to create our own edit, something similar to what we did, but not exactly the same. And this is just going to reinforce these new things which we just learned. Step nine, rinse and repeat, do it all over again with a different edit the slightly more challenging and which will prompt you to learn things. And this nine step process is exactly what I did in order to learn how to edit videos. Now it will be the most challenging way to learn, but if you want to actually understand the software that we're using, this is what you need to do. And I can tell you from firsthand experience and you can even see it on this very channel. I learned all of my skills just by doing this. When I recreated the Magnates Media edit, when I recreated the Sunny V2 edits, I had no idea what I was actually doing. I just broke it down into small steps and when I didn't know what to do, I learned how to do it. And this helped me learn the software inside out. And also it made the things that I learned actually stick inside my brain. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, then leave a like, subscribe, and comment what you want to see in the next video, as I want to help you become the best editor that you possibly can be. I'll see you in the next one.